Hey everybody, welcome back to another land place. My name is Captain Birth Plus. 15 wins in a row. You know, if we hit 30, I said I'd be happy. That doesn't mean that's where I'd be happiest. I'd be happiest at infinity. RYL2 NTDR. Not a doctor, by the way. I got an idea. Because this run actually, is this XL? It is XL. Um, this run seems like it has a synergy that you might not immediately notice. You might immediately notice it, but you might not. Um, Blood Rites, any form of HP generation, can be in conception, equals a pretty good chance. I mean, don't even get me started on the stats right now, which are really good. But a pretty good chance to get some familiars. I don't know what kind of familiars we'd be hoping for, considering the familiars from the deal with the angel. And they tend to be not necessarily that amazing, but, you know... Guardian Angel's okay. Seraphim's pretty good. You know, this that's the name of that item, right? Surely. I don't know. I don't I don't go to the Angel deal enough. Despite going to it probably more than most people to remember the names of the items. Okay, that takes up too much mental brain space. I got a lot of stuff up there. Recipes for the instant pot, etc. etc. It's actually a really nice time to get a second uh or is it not a second, but a speed upgrade in general. Small rock compromised our speed slightly have it at a more effective level seems very nice um we do by the way appear to have a library and a library is is really potentially very good but i don't have a key i also have a second item room to get to first not to mention we gotta do okay now i got a key we gotta uh deal with the devil we might have to pay for we got another item room etc 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 we got to be careful because like uh if we want to do this blood rights strat and I, I gotta admit, it, it seems pretty cool, if it could work. Um, we're gonna need HP. So as of right now, um, you know, we have the slightest, like literally the thinnest of possible HP related margins to work with. I'm wary about using blood rights right now, just cause we got this guy locked down. I would rather pop it uh, on the next fight if we have a choice in the matter. Not HP, that's beautiful. And then Monstro, sure, we'll use it once. We got a, a really, really, really solid setup on DPS here. Now I'm gonna tell you, I would love to see a bad deal with the devil. Or I wouldn't mind it at least. Just be like a Krampus would be maybe the ideal. Just nothing. Oh, dude. Perfect. Okay. Why do I like Krampus here? We get to get something that's potentially useful if we get Lump of Coal. Which we didn't, but still. Um, while also maintaining our HP that we could use with KMB and Conception. Which has been working out, uh, I mean, so far so good, I guess. Alright, this uh, is just an embarrassing item, honestly. Uh, please remove Mom's coin purse from the game. I'm just being belligerent now. But, like, if you did remove it, nobody would miss it. <laughs> Maybe that's what I mean. Alright, so we got Book of Shadows alone. Um, Book of Shadows alone, maybe not the highest value out of, uh, out of a single key that you could possibly manifest, but life goes on. Dude, honestly, Demon Baby with no other options? Sure, it's pretty good. I can live with, like, just about everything we got going on here. The only thing I'd love to see uh, specifically to enable our setup right now is um, I, it's something that drops HP. And it doesn't have to be Red Hearts. If we could get uh, the Relic, you know, once every four rooms we, we would have a free Spirit Heart to play around with. We could drop the Spirit Heart uh, to get a little closer towards the Familiar. And, you know, it, it's all about basically gambling about where we think we need our HP to be, you know? Two and a half is a little low, or three, really, if you want to be optimistic here. But, you know, if we got to, like, seven, we'd probably consider it, you know, room to work with. For now, um, you know, for better or for worse, I am pretty much using uh, KMB and Conception, or I should say Blood Rites, I guess, whenever we get the chance. It's a little... Sometimes, you know, and I'm guilty of this in, in every video game-related context you can imagine. It's not just Isaac, but... You know, you get one mechanic that seems different, and you're like, maybe I could lean on that and make something happen. All of a sudden, you know, you forget the spirit of the game. What's the spirit of the game? Dodging. <laughs> we could just dodge uh, and uh, 
also shoot enemies simultaneously. We don't need to worry about this whole Cambian Conception thing. So let's just try to keep it balanced, you know? Oh, so good. Little column A, little column B. Maybe is a good way to describe it. I gotta say, by the way, dude, I, it's been a good year for content on YouTube, for me, personally at least. Um, you know, you're, you might not be into everything, but this time last year, um, it was just Isaac Slay the Spire. I don't know, we might have been playing one other thing now and then, but a, like a lot of Isaac, obviously, a lot of Slay the Spire, obviously. Um, just, I mean, it, we're only three and a half months into the year. Already played Civ, bunch of Tetris, Factory Town, Baba is you, Isaac Slay the Spire, Sekiro. You know, new stuff with Dan and Mathis, etc., etc. It's been a really, like, positive time on YouTube. But right now, it feels like a golden age for me. You know? I I hate that, dude. I hate that. Why a golden age specifically? We're back in Roguelite City. Population me. Isaac, Slay the Spire and Gungeon. Plus a From Software game. Plus the co-op stuff. I'm just saying it's a good... It's a good time. I'm having a good time recording videos. Thank God we lived. Okay, I really appreciate the HP. <laughs> That's maybe the only boss that could have put me in a bind as much as... Uh, as much as it actually did there. Every other boss, I think we, we could have handled reasonably well. And it's only because Demon Baby shot twice to keep the bomb right next to us. Not to blame Demon Baby. I mean, at the end of the day, we picked Demon Baby up. But, yeah, I'm feeling... And, and particularly, you know, Isaac is what it is, you know? We're, we're kind of in a holding pattern to some extent until the DLC comes out. You know, it, it's anecdote fodder is basically what it comes down to. And that's cool. I'm, I'm happy to have, like, a podcast sort of environment to talk about stuff, whether ignorantly or otherwise. Um, Slay the Spire, A20 runs got bad. If you haven't watched Slay the Spire in a while, I know you're, you might be like, I, I had to bow out after the A20 runs, you know, went on ad nauseum. Um, that's fair, but we're doing the challenges in the game now. Stuff like, you know, beat the game with a deck that's less than five cards, and it's a lot of fun. Really appreciate that one there. Um, and it's kind of rejuvenated my enjoyment for the game. Sekiro's lovely. Gungeon, you know, discovering all the new stuff in that game. And I'm surprised how much, you know, Mathis, Dan, and myself enjoyed playing uh, that horror game, Pacify. <laughs> I've played, like, very, very few horror games over the course of my, uh, my channel's existence. Feels like I'm walking on sunshine. And, I mean, I'm not saying it's a masterpiece, don't get me wrong, but it was, I thought it was surprisingly enjoyable, to be honest with you. So it feels good. I mean, not that things are going, you know, wrong on Twitch for that matter. Just give me this for safekeeping, dude. Um, and let's look for a second secret room. Love to see it. Uh, still loving to see it. It's actually a pretty strong second secret room. Another spirit heart, another red heart as well. Uh, I don't really want to use ace of clubs on these when I could just blow them up instead. Let's see what we get. Uh, an unlimited bomb. There's actually no point, I think, in picking up an unlimited bomb. Now we'll use ace of clubs and get some more bombs ace out of it. Of I'd rather have a bomb than an unlimited bomb, I guess. And you know what? Let's, let's save our keys. We could have gone back for the golden chest, but I think we're better off using them for item rooms, maybe. Hold on, let me see. I got, I got some relevant messages today. The The message just says, uh... <laughs> We're talking about what to play on the NLSS. It's not a bad message. It, that, un, it, people get mad at uh messages. You should not get mad at a message that just says uh. Because that, that's them saying, hey, I saw your message. At least they're not hitting you with the, you know, a no response. I don't mean a response that is a no. I mean literally, like, just not responding. You know, sometimes a no response is, uh... As much as it's gonna maybe get me raked over the coals, sometimes a no response is the most applicable response. You know, you don't necessarily owe somebody, uh... Your time. Somebody sends you something that's nasty. You don't have to reply. I wish you hadn't sent that, mister. You can... You have my permission to ghost them in that unique situation. But, um... 
This still heals me, even though it's a, it looks like a bed from a Motel 6, I think. Oh, thank God. Um, but you know, the, I, I'll take an um over a, over a ghost thing any day of the week. You know what, I read an article, and I don't know how, how true it actually is, but it said that, uh, I don't know, it, it, Zoomers, is that what they're called? The, the generation just past millennials, which I am, even though I pretend to be a baby boomer on the internet. Um, they're actually, uh, they're bringing back random, essentially, telephone calls. I was really hoping, Algis? Algis, by the way? Okay. Um, and I've, I've talked about this in Isaac episodes specifically, where like, I don't know about you, I'm 30 years old. Um, I feel like the idea of me calling another 30-year-old friend of mine out of the blue is like a, is like treason, you know? It's like an offense the likes of which you could possibly litigate upon them for. Why? Well, it's not really like a good reason. It's just it's, it's, it's outside of the cultural norm, you know? It's not something we do. You, you want me to have a telephone call, we gotta, we gotta prepare, we gotta have, uh, you know, what are we gonna talk about during the telephone call? Could you please send me uh, the minutes of the, our previous meeting so I know where we're at, etc, etc. Um, but yeah, the, the article was basically like, the younger generation, it's not phone calls, it's FaceTimes. But it's, it's called spontaneous FaceTiming. And uh, apparently, you know, a certain subset of the, the younger generation, the younger Jenny as I call it, they're, uh, they're bringing it back. And it just goes to show you, dude, everything old is new again. Even old. A random call on the telephone. Apparently texting uh, is uncool now. And by the way, if you find yourself, maybe you're in your mid or early 20s and you're like, huh, texting uncool? Um, I don't think so, Tim. Uh, guess what? Welcome to being on the outside looking in. At first, you know, you're, you look to the people slightly older than you to figure out what's cool. And then you choose what's cool. And then you look to the generation slightly younger than you to figure out what's cool. And then you're lost. <laughs> once, once you get outside of the, the bubble, you're basically, uh, you're, you're on the outside looking in. So, you know, I don't make the rules. Texting's still cool with me, dude. And again, please, do, like, if, if you're a friend of mine and you're listening to this, I, first off, I don't even have an Apple device, so your, your spontaneous FaceTime is going to fall on uh, deaf ears and eyes. But, um, yeah, just walk right through it. But uh, beyond that, definitely I would take that as an, it's an act of aggression. It's basically like a declaration of war, socially, if you were to call me out of the blue. Um, Daniel, for example. Uh... But, you know, hey, fellow texters, welcome. Welcome. Soon you'll be uh, looking forward to Sundays because you could sleep in, but you're not going to sleep in. In fact, if anything, you're looking forward to them because you have an excuse to get up early. Excuse me? How did that happen? By the way, where is my Cambian Conception pay? Okay, it literally just happened. Maybe that does Guardian Angel drop a spirit heart when it spawns, or maybe Cambian Conception pays out with a spirit heart when it spawns a familiar? I don't know, man. I'm just interested in the way you know. Like I'm, I'm not worried about coolness whatsoever. And my wife will tell you <laughs> that that's not lip service. I, you know, it doesn't bother me at all. I don't go outside wearing, you know burlap sacks or something like that but you know i don't really i don't really care if people are like eh, this guy's dressed on cool well you know coolness it's uh it's uh it's the wind it changes in, in direction and severity and etc cetera, etc cetera over time I, I don't concern myself moreover i i'm you, you hit a certain age i think coolness comes from within you know and i've talked about this on the streams before but I think coolness to me is much less about, you know, when you're a teenager, maybe even a young adult. It's about, you know, who can... It's like the social indicator of who's the most uh, tuned in with what's acceptable behavior or something like that, right? Like, oh, that guy's cool. He's following all of the cultural norms, except for the ones that he's breaking, but looking darn good doing it. As an adult, I'm like, coolness, you know, for me, I think it stems from... Uh, like a sense of genuinity. I don't know if that's a word, but it sounded nice or felt nice coming out of my throat there. 
You know, the idea that what's cool is really people doing things that they love, um, and not so much worrying about the way that other people feel about them, you know? That's what's cool to me now. And that's not a, like, I'm not some kind of incredibly noble person for that. Dude, absolutely. I think that that's a very common feeling as, as you get up there. You know, when I was younger, what was cool? Doing donuts in your car in the Wendy's parking lot. As an adult, I would, it wouldn't really strike me as being that cool, to be honest. But I'll tell you what, if you're really passionate about doing donuts in the Wendy's parking lot and you and you enjoy it, then, uh, you know, I'd probably look upon it slightly more favorably. But still, I'd be like, hey, that's private property, mister. Some dude wants to spend all weekend gardening or something like that. That's cool, dude. Tell me, tell me more about, you know, the, the kind of plants you're growing there. You got the three sisters set up. You got the you got the squash on the bottom, and then I always forget the middle one, and then you got the corn on top. The nitrogen fixing plants involved. I by the way, don't fear. Even though I took that eternal heart, I will still feel compelled to use blood rights if we get the HP base necessary. I do have a grocery store anecdote though. I mean I, I have another anecdote to counter this anecdote, by the way, and we'll get there. But uh First, it's going to be a joke, and then I'm going to meet your uh, objection with some real talk that's probably a little condescending. But anyway, I was at the grocery store yesterday, as you might expect, and I uh, had to get some cat litter, because I'm a good husband. Cat litter wasn't on the grocery list, but I remembered that a night earlier, Kate had been like, we need cat litter. So when I went to the grocery store, I saw the cat litter, it triggered that repressed memory, and I bought the cat litter. But as I was buying it, there was a, a, a you know, maybe 40-year-old guy... It behind me in line with his, uh, you know, romantic partner, and uh, he was like, "Must be a big cat," because I guess it was like a big container of kitty litter. Um, bombs. Sure, I don't need bombs that much, so I'm happy with this. There goes the eternal heart, but it's all worth it, maybe. Um, and I say, so he said, "Must be a big cat," and I said, "Nah, he just poops a lot." And then, the guy said, wait a minute, your cat is named poops a lot And before I could correct him, his girlfriend went, aww, what a cute name for a cat. That's the end of the first part of the story. You might be like, you know, not that exciting. Okay, let me add some layers to it. He was buying one item at the grocery store. Can you guess what the item was? It was Purell hand sanitizer. His breath s smelled like one thing. Do you want to ask? I bet you can guess what it is. Purell hand sanitizer. He also, you know, for, for anybody that doesn't know, you can, and um, please preface this by saying, do not do this. You will probably, I mean, you may not die, but you're going to do some serious, perhaps even permanent damage to the, you know, fleshy structures in your mouth. Um, you can, you know, a lot of these hand sanitizers have alcohol as the active ingredient. Um, which is why, unfortunately, due to the human brain being really, really exploitable, they have added bittering agents, I believe, so that, you know, people don't just go drink it, for the most part. You know, it's the same with, like, Listerine, for example. They're, they're common, like, I, it's gonna sound very rude, but common, like, homeless alcoholic substitutes. Anyway, he and his girlfriend were also arguing in line, like, the whole time, until the whole poops a lot thing happened. And it was, like, it was uncomfortable. But anyway, I told this story in Mouth's chat, and then somebody was like, Wow, NL, real classy, making fun of, like, a homeless with a substance abuse problem. Hold up. First off, I'm only saying this to defend myself very, very selfishly, but I wasn't making fun of him. I was adding context to the story. We've never had the blanket here, have we? I don't even know what it does. Is Spirit Heart's full health? Okay, cool. It adds context to the story, okay, mister? Is that guy the butt of the joke? I don't know. Maybe I'm the butt of the joke. Maybe you didn't think it just poops a lot was that good of a punchline. That's fine. Secondly, dude, I we don't have any bombs. I have a great excuse. This is where it gets in to be a little bit prickly. But, you know, if you live in Vancouver, San Francisco, Portland, Seattle, uh, Toronto, you know, like, you, you, you interact 
with the homeless population on a regular basis. Wait, do we get one holy mantle per turn here? Or per floor, I should say. Sorry, I've been playing a lot of Slay the Spire. You, you interact with the homeless on a regular basis. They're people, you know? Everybody I know on the West Coast is sympathetic to the homeless situation. They treat them like human beings. But simultaneously, there's nothing more annoying than, like, you tell an anecdote that involves, you know... I, wait, let me explain something to you. Mouth almost got stabbed with a scalpel by someone clearly suffering, you know, the vagaries of mental illness in Toronto. And even still, sometimes he tells the story and people go, wow, I feel, like, really sympathetic to the woman who almost stabbed you. You, know, you, you can get a little too sympathetic. My man almost got stabbed walking to the subway station. I, I feel like people sometimes, they search their, uh... They search their brain and they're like, what would be, like, the most woke response to this. Sorry you almost got stabbed, Mouth, but simultaneously, you know, you really shouldn't be telling that story. It seems like she's going through a rough time. Screw that, dude! You almost got stabbed, you know? Half of the people that are like, you shouldn't be telling that story, live in a place where, you know, they, they never have to interact with stuff like this. I'm not saying that it's a disaster, you know. I, you, you respect them as human beings. You, you give them the time of day. And you can choose how to interact with them beyond that. You know, we pay a staggering amount of tax towards civil services. You know, clean injection sites and stuff like that to manage the harm reduction side of the problem. And as somebody that lives in a town with like 5,000 people is like, man, I feel, you know, like you shouldn't be telling that story. Dude, we're living in it. You know, we got to... I had the same thing, like, uh, literally later, I was driving home, and there was just a dude, uh, and, you know, it was busy roads. There was just a dude, like, hanging out on the road. There's, like, a f three lanes in each direction, and I'm, I'm trying to go, and I'm not like, you know, Hong Kong, get out of the way, idiot. I'm like, dude, I'm really sympathetic to what you're going through, but at the same time... Could you, like, get off the road for your own safety? And also, like, I don't want to hit you either is the thing. It's not like, you know, hey, if you don't move, I'm going to run you over. It's more like, please get on the sidewalk, my friend. And, you know, can I get you a bottle of water or something like that? But simultaneously, dude, like, you're putting us both in a serious amount of risk here. Wearing all black, uh, hanging out on, you know, East 2nd Avenue at night. Justice. Anyway. I only said I wanted to get ahead of the objection. Oh, the entitled uh, YouTube boomer makes fun of guy with substance abuse problem. No, I'm not necessarily making fun of his substance abuse problem. I'm just adding context to the story that maybe I didn't actually misspeak, and instead the Purell had this guy. And now he's gonna tell the story for the you know the rest of his life. He's gonna be like, yeah, I met a weirdo in the grocery store that named his cat Sir Poops a lot. I would never name my cat Sir Poops a lot. My cat has more dignity than I do, especially based on the decorum with which I've handled this story. The way I see it is, it's kind of like, I mean, I, I, I do want to stress, kind of. It's kind of like being a nurse. You know, I, I feel like if you're a nurse and you have stories about people that, you know, are coming into the emergency room and being like belligerent towards you. And, you know, you got to like tie them down to the bed or something like that. You're allowed to tell that story because you're living the life, you know, you're you're actively helping with the problem And you know, don't let anybody that works in an office all day be like, oh, you really shouldn't say that, you know Unless you said something you really shouldn't say, but You know, if you're in the S, as they say A little bit of, you know, gallows humor in my opinion never hurt anybody As long as it's, you know, not incredibly mean-spirited in this case, if anything, the dude should be apologizing to me for thinking that somebody as cool as me would name their cat Sir Poops a lot. Which sounds like a, a maybe a cool name for a cat for you, but for me, eh, it's like what Bill Murray would name his cat. You got something against Bill Murray? Well, not really, I guess, but... I mean, I like his movies, but I don't really see myself as a 70-year-old man going around to South by Southwest and getting hammered with strangers. I actually find it in its own way kind of melancholy, but you know, that's it's, it's his life, not my life, so, you know, I'm not gonna tell him how to live his life. I will say as long as you're not drinking hand sanitizer you're probably okay. That's how we'll loop it back around. 
That's one of the very few times, by the way, I will be like... <laughs> I'll add the warning, the preface, if you will. Because sometimes, you know, on the show... Like, I was eating glass the other day. By the way, Chad, don't do that! I mean, everybody knows, you know? You eat glass, you're gonna have a bad time. And don't even st I know what you're gonna say. What about that French dude who ate a whole airplane? You know what? If you're the French dude who ate a whole airplane, you know, know your limits, stay within it. But I'm not that French dude. So I, I, I can't... Vouch for him, one way or the other. But this case, I don't know, you might be hearing this for the first time and be like, Ooh, you can drink Purell, huh? Don't do that. I mean, you, I know you're like, whatever, Grandpa. I get it, you're old, it would kill you, but for me, I would just get wrecked. Nah, you would like, it's not meant for human consumption. If you saw this guy, you would consider it a cautionary tale. I'm well, you know. If there's maybe like 0.1% of the population is dumb enough to butt chug, you know, like drink a beer with their butt, might be the same proportion to drink hand sanitizer. So I do feel like I have a responsibility to say, uh, don't do that. <laughs> You can't hit me. I'm I'm too strong. Potion seller. Anyway, those are my anecdotes. That's basically it. It was a good excuse me, why aren't you dead? It was a good weekend, you know? Had a good time, saw some friends. That's about it. Like I didn't really accomplish all that much. I don't know why I'm being given the third degree here in my Isaac episode. Watch a new Game of Thrones episode? How do you feel about it? Who cares, you know? I didn't think it was one of the strongest episodes of Game of Thrones, and, you know, they only got five more episodes to wrap the whole thing up. I wish they'd go a little faster, but simultaneously, it's been two years. Yeah, they gotta do some setup before the dominoes start to fall. I understand, okay? You know, th those are my thoughts on the Game of Thrones episode. If you wanted to know NL's review, there you go, okay? I do, I, I will say, you know, for, Game of Thrones is probably the thing that I'm most into that I don't actually enjoy <laughs> all that much anymore, necessarily. I'm not just watching out of a sense of duty, like, well, the, it's the final season, I gotta see how it goes. But, you know, that's that's part of it. Like, I enjoy it, but there are some eye rolling moments more now than in the past, in my opinion. But I, I read the Game of Thrones subreddits, and whenever somebody has, like, a negative opinion on the episode, People will be like, Jesus Christ, you can't win. When they do X, people don't like it. When you do Y, people don't like it. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> you can win. They won for like for like five or six seasons. They just made they made better episodes that everybody loved it. Now that the episode quality has faltered at least a little bit, people are not as into it. So there is a way to win, in my opinion. That's the other part of it, and, and I've talked about this a lot as well. You know, I've talked about everything a lot as well. Might as well fly, I suppose. Um, but there's like... I really feel like people get... Their opinions get more radical on the internet. For the very simple reason that finding other radical opinions you disagree with is like 10 times easier than it was 20 years ago. So like... What the heck? Malv, why are you talking through my phone here? He's, he's playing freaking, uh, City Skylines. No, he's playing, uh... Oh, I know what happened. That's weird. I got a telephone call. And then the telephone call, I didn't pick up. But it started playing a stream I had paused... ...through the phone. That was weird. Anyway, I've lost my train of thought. I was making a pretty big point but like you know now if you ever maybe you love game of thrones in the past you would talk to people where are these coming from dude? you would talk to people and most people would have like a pretty similar opinion i liked it i didn't really like it that much now you can find within 10 seconds somebody that's wrote an essay that's like this is everything i have a problem with i think that's what leads to people getting mad like, I've, uh, I've spent a lot of, a lot of mental 
processing power, trying to figure out why everyone's mad online at all times. I've really come to the opinion that, at least for, like, trivial issues, ignorance is bliss. For serious issues, you know, it pays to be informed and, you know, kept abreast of the situations that are happening in the world around you. But for, like, you know, just bad takes on media, you just be happier if you, if you mostly ignore them. Because who cares if somebody doesn't like a show or if somebody loves a show? I guess we'll just fight Mega Satan here. You know what I mean? I, I think I'm getting my point across relatively well. It's, it's similar to the idea of, like, you know, everybody had, like, a weird uncle growing up, but the weird uncles didn't have, like, a place where they could gather. So they just always ended up being, like, kind of the dude in the group who's like, yeah, can you get me another beer? Also, the government is putting mind-controlling substances in the water. Now, you know, tens of thousands of these people find each other, and uh, the organization makes them... Much less harmless, I guess, would be a good way to describe it. And I guess they always had the potential for some degree of harm. Um, but now that they can actually, you know, find one another and grow stronger as a result. Um, you know, obviously, if you disagree with me, you're like, okay, I get it. NL's part of the New World Order. I don't know, dude. I must be missing out on that newsletter. But get out of here, dude. It's the same thing as, like, you know, back in the day, you might have, like, one friend who doesn't, you know, you go see uh, Collateral with your friend, and you're like, dude, that was a really good movie. And they're like, I don't really like it. I don't like Tom Cruise having gray hair. And you're like, okay, well, you know what? That's fine. But now you go online, and it's like, Collateral Haters Monthly. Making memes about, you just can't win, dude. You get the idea. It's just, I should just stop spending so much. I mean, I don't, I say I spend time on Twitter. I don't really spend that much time on Twitter. I'm on, a, like, the duration of approximately 0 0.5 bowel movements per day. It's not that much time, to be honest with you. Um, i done better about social media. Dude, social media... <laughs> it's another commonly recurring bit for me, but, like... I, I want to go back to, like, 2010-era social media. That was the social media everybody made fun of, but I actually think was, like, substantially better. Like, when I think of Twitter now, I think of, like, people saying incredibly dumb stuff, and then people that are slightly smarter retweeting it and going, Hey, look at how dumb this thing is. Twitter in 2010 was just, like, sandwiches. Check out this sandwich I'm having. Wow, it's really good. And then the replies were all, like, good sandwich. Those were the days, man. You ever wonder why, like, Facebook, Twitter took off, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. It's the sandwich meta. I was thinking about it, like, so I'm from definitely the generation that popularized Facebook. I was, like, 17 when they opened it up to non.edu email addresses. Uh, so, you know, I was right, I was in freshman year of university, first year. I was on, uh... I, w I was right at the cusp of being the, the exact right age for Facebook. And I'm thinking, dude, cultural norms have changed so much. You used to, like, in, this was totally normal. I know you're going to be like, no, you were the weird one. I promise you it was normal. You would go to a party or something like that. You would meet somebody, and you'd be like, hey, what's your name? And they'd be like, oh, my name's uh, Steven. you get home, or you you know wake up the next morning, Facebook search Steven, match the picture up, add his friend. And then you'd be like, we met each other once, we gotta be friends on Facebook. That was a totally normal reaction. I was thinking about that now, and I'm like, dude, if, if I met somebody, like, randomly, and then I got home and had a Facebook friend request from them, I would be like, yo. <laughs> um, just because we met once doesn't mean you get access to a decade's worth of my photos and opinions. <laughs> Are you insane? But that's how we did it back then. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. I'll see you right deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!